Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Mistakes made and lessons learned in the design and delivery of program. Sok 1991 had in his issue of research about the mistakes made when planning adult education program and how to take actions to reduce it. He focused on 1. Mistakes made in the design and delivery of educational programs for adults. 2. The lesson learned from making errors in planning and delivery. 3. Factors that often account for failure, especially insufficient participation, negative reactions to program, little or no intent learning, lack of transfer to the natural environment. Quote by Sok, Making mistakes is a natural but certainly not desirable dimension of our work. Viewing every failure as an opportunity to learn more about success is the only way to redeem what can otherwise be a lonely and dismal experience. Successful and unsuccessful of adult education program. While we all know that highly ineffective program leads to name calls such as dirt, loser, or flop, whereas highly successful program can coin as star, winner, or smash hit. What are the indicators of highly successful programs and unsuccessful programs? There must be factors that contribute to successful and unsuccessful programs. Right program planning, effective, skillful instructor, the personality of the instructor, excellent facility, and participant involvement in planning could lead to highly successful programs. But take note of these factors. 1. Require time and communication and exchange ideas. 2. Planning the activities after pre-drawn the list of indicators and factors that associate with successful and unsuccessful programs. 3. Look out for changes in the planning environment. 4. Keep in touch with the program while it is in progress. 5. Kick contributes and enhances the educative value of the program. Client responsive to the programs. What are other additional attentions that must include to characteristics of the program that make it practitioners responsive? 1. Determination of the target audience. 2. Promotion and marketing. 3. Competition in the programming. 4. Logistic or program design. The greatest facilitators of participants are, for example, in the pharmacist program. 1. Personal desire to learn. 2. Exchange ideas with others. 3. Opportunity to meet, interact with people. 4. Relaxation provided by learning as a change of pace from routine. 5. Enjoyment. 6. The requirement of maintenance of professional licensure. The barriers to participation, example, pharmacist participation. 1. Job constraints, example, lack of relief helped or lack of time off. 2. Lack of relevance of learning opportunities known to be available. 3. Family constraints, sports, children or personal. 4. Scheduling, location, distance, time of group learning activities. Another concern is that one should see how the facilitators and barriers interact could also lead to participation. For example, multiple barriers and facilities interact at the same time. The belief decreasing the numbers of barriers might enhance the facilitators, thus promote increased participation. The barriers mentioned above and facilitators do not necessarily represent the universe of potential barriers and facilitators. Other areas concerns should be taken into notice when planning the program. 1. Insufficient enrollment. Why? 2. Program cancellation. Why? 3. Budgeting consideration. 4. The systematic planning model. Negative reactions. How to avoid negative reactions to program? 
Have you heard participants complain this? For example, the program did not meet my expectations. I did not like the method of presentation. There was not enough time to socialize and sort information with colleagues. The program ran behind schedule, which showed a lack of planning. The planning was not practical enough to help me in my home situation. I did not get good pre-program service. I could not figure out how to implement new ideas from the program in my home situation. The program presentations did not take into the cultural diversity of the audience. I wasted my time because I already know most of the program content. As a presenter, I was unhappy with the program. So I have mentioned the negative reactions towards planning program. This will lead us to take the step into, for example, how to deal with the upset participants. As there are so many different learning styles, program planners can help members arrive at the program with a similar set of expectations regarding the method of instruction that is used. Build adequate formal and informal time for socializing. Develop a realistic schedule. Use program timetables as appropriate, then stick to the schedules. Offer practical suggestions that can implement at home. Prompt acknowledgments upon participants make their registration with the programs. Use action implementation plans. Take cultural diversity of the audience into consideration. Detailing to the program planners the types of audience, goals of the program, goals of the presenter section, and other pertinent information. What if the outcome is not achieved? Why can certain outcomes not accomplished? What's wrong with the planned programs? Allen in 1991 suggests five possibilities. One, carelessness. Example, sloppy room setup, poorly organized materials, missing or out of date handouts, equipment that does not work. Two, confusion. Example, collaborative zeal. All continuing educators end up with so many levels of management involved in the planning process could lead to loss of focus on the training section and confuse to participants. 3. Lack of commitment. That is, do not sacrifice the learning process to meet all needs. 4. Lack of quality and courage. That is, curriculum developer put no effort on asking more questions and investigated more thoroughly during planning and courageous enough to say no to subject matter experts. 5. Lack of cultural diversity, that is, learn as much as you can ahead of time about the country and the particular organization where you will be training. Transfer your learning. For example, how to transfer new learning to a natural environment? First, we need to clarify what learners want to achieve. Next, help learners to see the connection between their performance and a meaningful reward. How about establishing rewards? When rewards are delayed, for example, in business and industry, rewards are so far removed from the desired performance that they are ineffective. How to enhance transfer and how to ensure that skills transfer will occur? So, we need structuring expectations, improving skills and establishing rewards. In conclusion today, we learned that Making mistakes is a natural but certainly not desirable dimension of our work. There must be factors that contribute to successful and unsuccessful programs. We learned that to plan responsive programs, planners should pay attention to the facilitators and barriers of participation. Take steps to resolve negative reactions from the participants. Some possibilities lead to outcomes that are unachievable. We learn that when rewards are delayed and are so far removed from the desired performance that they are ineffective. Thank you for your participating, watching and listening. Until next time.